Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today we're going to be taking a look at Long Cat. No, it isn't about stretching kittens, although as a rodent that does sound somewhat intriguing. No, it's about being able to generate longer AI videos in Comfy UI by doing some sort of concatenation. If we take a quick look at this note, it's got some information about the key features. It provides a unified architecture for multiple tasks. Long Cat Video unifies text to video, image to video, and video continuation tasks within a single video generation framework. That's this workflow we're going to be looking at here. It natively supports all these tasks with a single model and consistently delivers strong performance across each individual task. And there's all sorts of other information there which I'm sure you can read for yourself. This is all stuff you can do at home on your own computer using Comfy UI. And those familiar with the channel will know that I like to follow the way of the nerd and use the rodent method for workflows. This means putting things neatly into little boxes, which I think makes things easier to follow and also easier to update. If you're looking to make this modified workflow for yourself, then don't forget you can pause the video, take screenshots and all that sort of fun stuff as you go along. Also, if you find these videos helpful or perhaps you'd like all of this work done for you already, then you can support the channel via the Patreon link in the video description. Your support helps me make even more workflows for you and to share these videos with everyone. The freedom to choose is of course yours and a huge thank you to all supporters because you make this possible. Okay, let's get into the workflow then. To start with, we've got this nice loader here and we're using the FP8 version of the Long Cat model. Using the base precision there of BF16 is very important as if you try to pick one of the other things such as FP16, then you're not going to get a very good result. So make sure that's set to BF16. As usual, the best attention mode is Sage Attention, but if this is your first time using Comfy and you don't have things like Sage Attention or Flash Attention installed, then you can just select SDPA. On to loading the LoRa's, and there is just one LoRa for this at the moment, but I like using the multi-loader anyway, just in case. It does also work with a slightly lower strength as well, so do feel free to play around and see what works best for you. The next three boxes are for applying the block swap and that LoRa, as well as the torch compile option we've got down here. You can just disable this if you don't want it. There's a little option box later for turning that off. And there's some more information down here about VRAM on the block swap box. So as you can see from the markdown note there, if you set blocks to swap, that's this setting over here, quite low, so down to 11, then you're going to need something like a 3090, 4090 or 5090, because that's around 24 gig of VRAM. Of course, you can turn the blocks to swap all the way up to 40, and with that amount, then you're only going to need 12 gig of VRAM, which is much better. There are some experimental options there you can try as well, but I much preferred the results without. For example, I tried attaching the cache and it really didn't look quite as good, but they are there once again for you to mess around with if you like that sort of thing too. As this workflow can do text or image to video, there's an image option here. As you can see, very simple and basic. We're just loading the image and then resizing it as required. Now, because this is quite a long cat, there's a whole bunch of settings here which will apply to all of the K sampler blocks we're going to take a look at in a moment. Here in settings then you can see we've got the text to video width, the height, overlap, so how much each concat is going to overlap, the number of frames, 93 is a good default, the number of steps for each sampler, and also the CFG and shift values. A little note down here that I took while I was doing all this experimentation. You can go up to 720p resolution. 93 frames, 13 overlap is a good place to start. Higher shift values such as above 12 can work, although if you go lower than 12, I found it wasn't quite as good. One of the quite good ones I found was doing a shift of 24 and 14 steps. So do experiment away. You don't have to use the LoRa, but if you are using it, then 12 steps CFG1. And if you're not using it, then 50 steps and CFG4. Prompting is the next group, and there's going to be a few of these. So this is actually prompt number one. If we scroll down a bit, we've got 
prompt number two, which is the same, of course, it's changing the constant there to be prompt number two. It's also a prompt number three, prompt number four. And of course, you can just copy and paste. So highlight that, copy and paste if you want to make prompt five and prompt six and prompt seven. In the first prompt box, that's where I've put the option. So you can enable the experimental options if you want to. You can do image to video, text to video, and you can also turn that torch compile on or off if you want. So that would be a basic setting for doing the text to video, or you could turn that one off and then you could do image to video. There's also a little note down here reminding you to pick either text to video or image to video because if you choose both of them it's only going to use one you can of course disable torch compile if it's not supported on your system and remember you can change the prompt encoding let's have a quick look at that there so device cpu you could also use gpu as well if you've got plenty of vram i'm using the fp8 option in this case but of course you can use the fp16 text encoder as well if we take a look at what I've got then in my first prompt, I've got a fairly descriptive one to start with, a rodent riding a sleek, powerful red and gold tech hover bike through an alien city center. And it's got tall, gothic and metallic looking buildings and a futuristic sense to the film style scene. The rodent's wearing a black leather biker jacket for safety and comfort with massive black boots and silver buckles. The second prompt, prompt number two, carries on from that. So it's not quite as descriptive, but it has a rodent riding a space bike through an alien forest. From the future, the trees are very tall and it feels like autumn. For prompt number three, I've got a rodent riding a space bike through an alien forest from the future. He smiles and waves quickly at the camera. And then for prompt number four, the last one, I've got a leather jacket wearing rodent dude rides a space bike, which suddenly powers up and achieves liftoff, flying up from the road and into outer space, the darkness of the void-like cosmos around him, stars seeing as the cosmic rider starts on his true journey. This is the first sampling then, the text to video option, and it's all fairly straightforward. We're just using one video empty embeds with the width and the height we saw from the settings earlier, and the number of frames. We've got the first prompt, of course, going into this one, and we've got a new scheduler here, the long cat distill. So make sure that one is selected if you're popping that node in there yourself from scratch. CFG and the shift values there, of course, and the optional arguments, which we're not using. So that's all very straightforward. And then it just decodes. For the image to video box, it's pretty much the same, apart from instead over here, we've got the reference image. So we're taking that one in and we've got image batch extend with overlap. That's the new node we're going to see a lot of. So that takes the source images, which is just one image in this case, and then it goes into the WAN video encode. The samples from the WAN video encode node go into the WAN video empty embeds like we saw from before. So that's the extra latent. Let's pop up and have a look at that. So that's basically exactly the same as this, apart from you're attaching that into the extra latent. So there's the difference between the text and the image to video options. Because you can pick one or the other, it's nice to have a little switch between the two. So there's the text to video, which is the default input. So if you've got that on, it's going to use that even if you've got the image to video on and that goes into our standard output. So that way you can switch nicely between the image or the text to video. Now, before we take a look at any long cats, let's take a look at the output. And there he is. We'll just do a little zoom in here. Now it's not really a hover bike, it's more of a normal bike, but perhaps hover bikes haven't been invented yet. There he is, riding along. He's got his boots, he's got his leather jacket for safety. Pretty good result. Just doing a quick zoom out here so you can see what's going on. We've got that first one, but then we're sort of replicating it a whole load more times. So we've got prompt number one, number two, number three, number four. Of course, as you did with the prompt, you can just copy and paste and create loads more of these groups. So if you want to have prompt five and six, then you're also going to need to duplicate these groups as well. Let's take a look at what's going on in here then. So this is the second prompt block. And as you can see in this one here, We've got prompt number two, so that's one of the things you want to change. And like we did with the image to video, we're basically using that image batch extend with overlap node 
into the WAN video encode, and then of course into the WAN video empty embed. So the repeated ones afterwards are much like the image to video option that we saw just a moment ago. If we take a quick look at the video, basically we're going to see it took 13 frames of overlap from that initial video. So there he is in the city to start with. And like in prompt number two, where we had the autumnal trees, that's what he's doing now. So he's riding along, turns from the city into this forest. Just above that video node, we're also doing a few other little things as well. So we're taking that video, the previous one, video number one, and we're popping that into an image batch extend with overlap node, and we're sending that out to be the second video, so video number two. So that's how we pass all these videos on from one to the other. Now, we've also got this little note up here. So remember, if you're duplicating this group to create more, then remember to update that prompt update the video in and video out, and also change the seed. So let's just take a look at those again. So prompt there, you want to change that, prompt number one, two, three, four, and of course, you'll have more if you've duplicated the prompt block. The seed on the K sampler, you should change to be something else. In this case, I've got it incremented by one, so it's 421 instead. And then you've got the video out there, so video one out and video two out. Let's just take a quick look at the next one so it all makes more sense. So there you've got video two out, goes in. And if we go across at the top there, you've got video two, goes to video three, and across to the next one, video three goes to video four, and you just repeat that sort of sequence. Here's the video then for video number three. So he's riding along in the forest there, and remember he's doing a little wave, hi, hi, there he is. So driving along in the forest, little wave, seems to follow the prompt quite well. Hand is a bit strange, but we'll take a look at a different version in just a moment as well, where the hand is slightly better. And here is the little clip for the final section. So it's got him waving, and then he flies up into outer space. Now, finally, of course, you want to put all those different little clips together. So that's where I've got this extend video group at the end. So that takes all those little five, six second long clips, whatever you want to do with them, puts them all together into one final video. There he is driving along through the city and the forest. Then he does the little wave and vanishes off into outer space. Very nice indeed. Now, all of those videos were done using these settings, so 12 steps with a shift value of 12. Um, I would increase the steps a little bit sometimes. So 12 can be good, but 14 can be good, and 16 can be pretty decent as well. Also play around with the shift value. I'll uh, show you some of those different videos now. Okay, so same prompt and everything, same set of videos, but this time I've kept these steps at 12, but I've increased the shift value up to 18. Just to make it a bit easier to compare, here's the first video and the thing to look out for is the buildings and the shape of the bike there. So that's the shift value of 12 and then if we go to the shift value of 18 we see we've got this slightly different change to the motorbike and also the buildings I think are a little bit better. So take a look at the buildings there, then we go back to the other ones. So yes, it's, it's, up to, uh, it's up to you really to decide which ones are better, but I think those are decidedly more building-like. Here is the final video clip then, and as usual, he's driving along through the city, which then turns into the forest. Now again, the trees are slightly different, and watch out for his wave here. Oh, as you can see, as we've changed the shift value, the wave is very different. He seems to have even more fingers this time. It's a slightly shorter wave and also the zoom up into the sky is ever so slightly different as well. Trying with some new settings, still 12 steps this time, but I've increased the shift value all the way up to 24. The video this time, well, as you can see, I think the buildings are even more building-like, even though they're kind of going up and down a bit. The trees coming in there, also slightly different. He's got the turn and grin and the wave. Once again, the wave is slightly different. This time he waves twice, which is interesting. Still a strange number of fingers. And then of course he shoots up into the sky once again. Changing settings once more. So this time I've kept the shift on 24 and increased the number of steps to 14. The final video then, he's riding along on his bike. The buildings, I think, look even more building-like. The trees coming in there, okay, they're pretty good. Not quite as shifty, still a little bit shifty. Very strange looking grin. And what are we gonna get for the wave? 
All right, not a bad wave that time, and almost the right number of fingers before he shoots off into space. The settings for this next test then going up to 16 steps and still a shift value of 24. And there he is riding along through the city. I think the buildings there do look quite nice. The bike is, well, it's got that single golden bit at the bottom rather than the double pipes. The trees coming in and his rather interesting smile. We get a single wave there, still a strange number of fingers, but oh, that's a very different takeoff, isn't it? So there he's sort of shot up into space in the middle of the scene, which is a bit better. Now, if we change these steps to 16, but keep that shift value of 12, what's that going to look like? The result this time then, there he is riding along on his bike through the city, the buildings still doing their strangeness. In come the trees for the next prompt as he carries along. Hopefully we should get the smile and wave. Yeah, there's the smile. So he sort of moves his hand before he does the wave this time and then once again takes off into outer space. That was a very good takeoff, wasn't it? Didn't he do well there? Now, of course, you can do much higher resolutions than that as well. So let's take a look at 1280 by 640. That's these settings here. And this time I'm doing 14 steps with a shift value of 24. With the higher resolution, I think you'll agree those buildings are very much more like buildings. Our rodent dude seems to have some interesting hair, but the motorbike does still look very cool. And he's got some boots and oh, look at that wave. Look, he's, he's even got the right number of fingers. That's very good. And there, taking off into outer space. So increasing the video resolution there, I think, has dramatically improved things. Okay, it's image to video time here. We've got the input image, so a person walking in a city, and I've got a slightly higher width and height because those higher resolutions seem to come out a bit better. For the settings, I'm going with 14 steps and a shift value of 12. Because we're using an image, the prompt to start with at least can be fairly basic. So I've just got a woman is walking slowly down the street. For the second prompt, I've got the woman stops and turns to her right. For prompt number three, I've got the woman stands still as white fur sprouts from and covers her arms, so they become really very hairy indeed. And prompt number four, I'm sure you can guess what's going on here. The camera zooms into the head, which magically shifts and changes into a more rodent-like shape, with white hairy fur, long whiskers, large ears, and a cute little pink nose and smile. This time, of course, the first sampler is the image to video one, and here we can see she's walking down the street. Very elegant dress motion going on there. All right, let's take a look at the full video. The full video then, and here we have her walking down the street as per the first prompt, and hopefully she's gonna to turn to her right, which, yes, she does, and now are we going to get the hair, the fur growing out of her? Kind of, sort of. It's, a, it's an interesting growing of fur, but then eventually, of course, she does turn into the smiling rodent. Very nice indeed. There we have it then, a very long workflow for a very long cat. And if you like getting all nerdy with workflow details and stuff, then don't forget to like and subscribe for even more. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day showing us AI in a really British way.